following is a segment from session six of the Honestly Better Mental Fitness Show. If you would like a list of all of the segments and full sessions, please visit honestlybetterfitness.com forward slash list. That's honestlybetterfitness.com forward slash list. Welcome to L H Industrial's Honestly Better Mental Fitness. I'm Mike Lomber. I'm the president of L H Industrial. Standing in the middle of a breezeway in the shop in Tempe, Arizona, to get an idea of what we do behind us here. I found mental fitness a few years ago and it, it changed my life, it's changed my family's life. And now we'll bring it to old L H Industrial and recording it. So you put it out for us to hear it. Thank you for joining. I think this one might be related to some of those others in that we were just talking about in there, but letting go of that which does not serve you or serve us. And this could be um, a, a mistake we made, you know, something that we're, we messed up and it's sticking in our mind. This could be... Um, anger or resentment that we're holding on to from someone else. This could be fear or worry about some future thing that we're doing or some challenge or problem or task that we uh, have ahead of us. Could be um, racing thoughts when we're trying to sleep. It can be anything that is running through our mind or in our body that we know in this moment isn't helpful to us, and yet we can't let it go. Be like, okay, great, but there's nothing I can do about all these tasks that I have to do tomorrow. Like right now, I need to sleep, and it's almost like the 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 more important that it becomes, then the harder it is to to do the thing that we're trying to do. And so I consciously, like, we want to be able to let go of this thing. Maybe it's, maybe it's hurt from a relationship. Maybe it's something someone did that disappointed you or hurt you or you felt betrayed by and you can't let it go. And there's a, there's a time that it's probably appropriate and healthy to, to move through it. But then maybe it moves past that time and you're like, I need to be able to move past this. Why can I not? move past this here? Why can I not just let this go? And it's like consciously, like we want to let it go and we know we're holding on to something that isn't helpful to us in this moment. But unconsciously, we are holding on to an image of how life, others, or ourselves should be. I should have known better, but I didn't. I shouldn't have done this or that, or or this person shouldn't have done that. Like that was wrong to do that. And they should have helped me or or done this or done that or not do that or or kept that promise that they broke. And that is the core that's underneath the I know it's not good for me, but yet I still can't let go of this thing. I still can't because this is the part of us that is um, still holding on because I'm still holding on to my my picture or my worldview of how life, myself, or the others should be instead of what is. And I think it's a mismatch of like our belief of the way it should be versus um, what the environment around us is, is telling us it actually is. And the inability to let it go is the inability to let go of that belief of the way it should be. And I, I, I see some of the ways in which this impacts us, like it's um, maybe our relationship with our kids or a, a partner or a coworker, and we miss who they are because of our belief of how they should be.
it's a gift that somebody gives us, which is their presence and who they are. And we can't accept it because of what we think. And I'll give you a, an outside concrete example for a second. If we said, oh, thank you so much for showing up to the podcast today. Everybody's going to get $100 for, for showing up. Everybody would probably be like, wow, that's really awesome. You know, and then then we come back later. So, oh, it's actually ten dollars. Like, sorry, like here, here's a ten dollar check shows up in the mail and you'd be disappointed. You'd be like, ah, oh, like this sucks. But if we didn't say anything and just randomly a ten dollar check came in the mail, that said, thank you so much for showing up. Here's ten dollars. You'd probably be like, oh, cool. Ten dollars. That's awesome. Thanks. It's our expectation of what we think things should or shouldn't be that impacts us. And so I would invite you to, if you find yourself in that moment, say, you know, what is the beliefs that I'm holding on to in here? And I think part of it is perfectionism or like perfectionistic ideals. It's letting the uh, image of the ideal get in the way of what is. It's not seeing our kids for who they are and seeing them as a lesser version of who we want them to be keeps us from embracing who they are and enjoying who they are. Or maybe it's a partner or a friendship or uh, uh, anything there in life. And I and I'm, would also invite you and, and challenge you in this moment to like challenge those expectations of what it is like if you want to let go, I think most times like, okay, I just got to let this go. I know it's bad. So I'm just going to let it go. And, and, and it doesn't, it doesn't work. Right. So I'm going to say go underneath. Okay. What, what am I having a hard time going to go? What is the belief system? What is this, this ideal that I think should be, I, I should have performed to X, Y, Z levels and I didn't. Okay. Well, that is, why do I have this belief there? And, and challenging these beliefs, like where are these expectations that this is the way life should be? This is the way a partner should be. This is the way a, a, a friendship should be or whatever it is in your life. Like, are they really yours? Are, are these patterns that I want to hold on to? What am I gaining by holding on to these? What am I losing by holding on to these? We're missing out on the opportunity to enjoy the $10 we got because we're still stuck on the hundred dollars that we thought we were going to get or that we should. Um, and I think also partly is this progress doesn't happen in a straight line, right? Like I should be here by now. I should have been at this level or that level as, and, and me not being at the next level that I think I should be is actually preventing me from reaching that level. And so it's being able to accept the reality as it is which sounds like really stupid, right? Like being able to accept reality. Of course I can accept reality. Like it's real, it's the facts of it. And yet it's not. It, it is the thing that's getting in our way is our inability to accept what is. <clears throat> and I think there's, a, there's this um, story that comes out of like Zen philosophies uh, that I think can be, can be helpful or that might be helpful in this moment. There's this uh, farmer, right? And his horse runs off and all his neighbors come by and like, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, that's, that's terrible that you lost your horse. And, you know, he's a farmer and he's only got one and it, it's this really big deal. And he said, well, maybe. And they're confused. They're like, why is he not sad that his horse runs off? And then the next day the horse returns and it brought a mare, it brought a mate with it. And so now suddenly he's got two and it, it returned and it came back to him. They're like, oh, you know, what a, what a, what a blessing it was. And, and you know, this is so incredible and you're so fortunate and lucky. And he's like, maybe. And then uh, this new one, his, his son goes and rides and cause it's exciting. And his son ends up getting kicked off the horse and his exuberance to, to be here. And the son breaks his leg. And all the villagers come and they're like, oh, such terrible fortune. We're so sorry your son broke his leg. That's really awful. And he says, maybe. And then the, the next week, um, the Chinese army comes by and they're recruiting young men for the war effort. And because of his son having a broken leg, he wasn't being able to be recruited. And he says, all the neighbors come and say, what, what good fortune that you've had. And he says, you know, maybe, right? 
And I think the the lesson in the story here is we we don't know. We don't know the things that happen to us, like the things that we think should be or want to, they may or may not be the best things for us and to be able to accept reality as it is without projecting how we think it should be on top of it. I think we don't have to hold on so tightly to the image of the life we think we should have. It's okay to embrace the life we do.